previously on Fun Science Fiction. From that time that you're able or willing to share because, well, we just love stories. Uh, no? No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is Clayton Sandell, and welcome to the Funny Science Fiction Podcast. The podcast that made Ender Wiggins think that the Formix might not be so bad after all. All right, our guest today is a major Star Wars nerd, but it's still cooler than the rest of us because, well, he's found a way to sneak this fandom into his everyday job. Our guest is Newsy News Correspondent Clayton Sandell. Yep. Hey, guys. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you for joining us today, Clayton. Hey, thank you for having me. How are you guys doing? Okay. We're doing well. I, I'm excited to have you on today because I, I've seen some of your other interviews, and uh, as I'm watching it, I'm like... I'm like, no, no, they're cool, man. I'm I'm watching some of them. And you've you've interviewed on a on um, a couple shows that we've had people on from, and um, like you talk with Lacey Giller from the Resistance Broadband Network. Oh yeah, and uh, a couple different times, and those guys are really cool. I follow them and vice versa. Um, but as I was watching some of your interviews, I'm going, man, this guy's cool. He he gets to bring all this stuff into work. That's awesome. And then you know, there's a documentary which we'll talk about in a little bit that you were that you were part of around the time of the Last Jedi when that came out, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, so there's some really cool stuff to talk about. So well, let's talk. I yeah, it's it's been kind of a, a fun ride, and um, you know, I I didn't really mean to have it become part of my work, <laughs> uh, but when I kind of discovered by accident that 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 could be a thing, it was like put my claws right into it and uh, yeah. it made it happen. So When you can right. figure out how to bring what you enjoy into work and make your work that much more enjoyable, that's awesome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I also wanted to welcome you to my basement office, which also doubles as the laundry room over here. So, <laughs> you know, I've got, uh, I got the Star Wars stuff and the research books and everything and the ships and everything, but we're laundry office room, which is... If you're smart, you kind of paint them like a, a beige color and just call them gonks. You'll be fine. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So, there you go. It, the my, the wife might think that they, they don't match, but, you know, the rest of the house decor, but that's a whole other topic. Absolutely. So, Clayton, as our resident Star Wars fanboy here on Funny Science Fiction, uh-huh. I'm, I'm always happy to talk to another Star Wars fan. And one of the things I love talking to other Star Wars fans about is – what got them into Star Wars? What makes them tick? What keeps them coming back? So in your case, what is your entry point into the Star Wars fandom? What's your favorite movie and what keeps you coming back to this to the universe? Well, my my entry point uh, was the original Star Wars film in 1977. Uh, my favorite film is The Empire Strikes Back. And that is, I call it my my comfort movie. Like when I'm doing something around the house or, you know, just not feeling up, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. It, that is the movie that, that I put on uh, and just have it on in the background. I just everything about it, the, the soundtrack. Uh, you know, the, the sound effects, the story, you know, it all, it, you can imagine it going, it's just, it's Empire is my, my comfort movie. But yeah, I was, I was four when my aunt and uncle took me to the theater when I, and we saw the movie, uh, the original film. And so it was just, you know, at that, at that age, I don't know if I was maybe quite old enough to see it. I don't know. <laughs> But hey, uh, it it just you know latches yourself latches itself into your into a four year old's psyche and, and DNA, mm-hmm. and it just you know from there it was you just become one with Star Wars. Thing. Yeah, you just you just become yeah yeah, and it was such a like cool era of of Star Wars, and we had Close Encounters and ET and all that stuff as a kid. So mm-hmm. all that sci fi stuff just you know would just hit me at a prime prime time. Yeah, you were you were ready for it, that's for sure. Yeah. So that's awesome because um and I just want to say that we're probably moments away be- from becoming BFFs, but that's <laughs> we can talk about that a- we could talk about that after. Did we just become friends? We're gonna get necklaces, the, the matching pendants. Uh-huh. Oh, dude, I, I'm I'm already designing them. Don't worry about oh, it. Oh, perfect. Okay, he'll, good. he'll make you matching t shirts even. I, I add that ready just in case because I was like <laughs> there's so much Star Wars here that no, I I was not aware that uh Empire is your favorite movie. That is also my favorite movie. Yeah. Um, and the way you describe it as your comfort, I've always described the Star Wars universe as, as, as like my marriage. It's there for me in good times and bad and sickness and in health. Right. You know, 
Um, yeah. It doesn't matter what mood I'm in. It's always a Star Wars mood. What do you want to watch? I can watch Star Wars. Yeah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't yeah. matter which one. I'm, I'm happy to watch any of them. Um, so, but yes, yeah. okay. And now it's so easy because they're all collected in one place on Disney+. Yes. Plus. You just kind of jump in there and you have right? Star Wars smorgasbord that you can just go nuts. And, right. uh, it's, sometimes it's hard to figure out what to watch. The original trilogy is my husband's comfort movies. It's what he watches when he doesn't feel well. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's my happy place. Oh, yeah. Big time. What's even better is when my almost three-year-old does the... I want to watch Star Wars. Like, yes, I am succeeding as a parent. <laughs> so, many, so many good points there. So, <sighs> yep. so yep. out of the Star Wars universe, what is it about Star Wars, though, that keeps you coming back and saying, yeah, this is where I want to keep hanging my hat? Oh, man. You know, I think it has a lot to do with just the idea that friends are there to help friends you know they're they're, mm -hmm. they're there to, to come to the rescue there's so many so many rescues and you know times where uh it, it looked like somebody was was done for uh until uh you know you see it over and over this recurring theme where, where people just show up to help and and do the right thing and i think that um uh, you know, that is sort of the, the the through theme for a lot of Star Wars for me. And uh, I mean, you've seen it all the way up into the into the Bad Batch where you have Omega, you know, as like the conscious of conscience of this group saying we yeah. we've got to go back and help this person. They're, they're asking for help. We've got to go do something. It's not something uh, that, that they can do to, to just you know, stand back and, and watch things uh, go by without without helping out. So to me, that's sort of the um, the, the foundational uh, theme of, of Star Wars and these stories. But I mean, beyond that, as a kid, it was just like the ships and the droids and the, you know, dog fights and the explosions and the lightsabers and all of that. I mean, how how does that not uh, just suck you in and, and want to you know, make you, make you be a part of that world. I remember the first time I saw a lightsaber go up. Oh, <laughs> just <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, what is that? Yeah. Um, at home I playing don't with... remember that moment. Oh, I do clearly. And I remember going home and taking broomsticks and anything that was round and cylindrical that I could swing around at somebody. And it was now a lightsaber. So I think because I was, because of where I am age wise with the prequel trilogy coming out when I was a kid, I had already seen four, five, and six repeatedly. Right. I don't remember watching them for the first time because they were just, they were part of our life. They were always there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My parents are huge nerds. I mean, my dad was, he passed a year ago, but my dad is who got me into sci fi. Like, he introduced me to Star Wars, he introduced me to Star Trek, he introduced me to Doctor Who. And so it was always, there was always something sci fi on. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember. Like, I'm kind of sad. I don't remember the first time seeing a, a lightsaber light up. I do remember seeing Darth Maul's lightsaber, though, and doing the, whoa. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that was that was in the trailer, remember? And it was mm -hmm. just, it just, there was this, this shot that people were like, oh, my gosh. There's, it, it's double-ended? What? Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and going back to 1977, like, I have on YouTube, I should send it to you guys, I found a few years ago, um, I had some old eight millimeter movies, home movies transferred over to video. And one of them was Christmas 1977 when there really weren't any Star Wars toys, but there were, there was this thing that was basically a, a, a red plastic flashlight that attached to this semi transparent tube. And you could put uh, a, a blue colored gel or a red colored gel inside of it and turn it on. Mm -hmm. And it just looked like a red flashlight with a stick coming out of it. But that was the original lightsaber. And I've got like pictures of me like unwrapping it on Christmas morning. And it's just like that, you know, oh, that that's was, awesome. That my so cool. Star Wars toy Cause there weren't, there, there weren't any at that point. Yeah. Right. Really. Oh, oh that's but nice. cool. So the majority of our guests have an extensive IMDb filmography of movies, television, voiceover work, all various forms of fiction. Yours includes ABC World News, Tonight, and Good, Norm Good Morning America, and now Newsies. Or Newsies, sorry. Newsies would be cool. Anyway. <laughs> would be cool. <laughs> but now with Newsies. But it's can't some... sing or dance, right? So I, I can't do any of those. You know, we had OG Banks on the show, and he was in the movie with Christian Bale, and he can't sing or dance either, and he was oh, still well, in it. So okay, good, good, I think good. he'll be okay. <laughs> I think I think his explanation was that he was an actor that could move well. 
That yeah. was, that was oh, close okay. enough. I think that was how so, he described it, yeah. So you All could right. be, are you a reporter that moves well? <laughs> uh, reasonably well, yeah, in, in dangerous well, situations, sure. <laughs> I think you'd be okay then. But you've got some notable dives into reporting on Star Wars. So are you the resident Star Wars fan when you, where you work? And I will tell you, yeah. Yes. And and go ahead. Sorry. No, it's fine. I just wondered how you got that gig. And I was also saying that if if you're not, I'm sure Tim would totally take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or, or be my fill-in when I'm maybe, maybe when I'm off. Um, yeah, I'd be so willing to help. It, it, it really did happen by uh, by accident. Like I said before, there, there was a... in when the announcement was made that uh, Disney uh, had purchased Lucasfilm and George had sold the company, and I I was so excited by the idea that the movies were coming back. My fandom had always kind of been there, but I wasn't super active in it. Mm -hmm. I had never been, for example, to a Star Wars celebration. So I told my wife, don't buy me a Christmas present this year. I, what I want is, a, you know, the three-day pass to celebration. I'm going to take time off of work. And that's what I want to do. And so my buddy and I, my buddy Brian and I, were just going to go and hang out at Celebration. And what happened was about a week before Celebration, I was reminding my boss that I was going to be off. And I was going to be there uh, doing uh, just, just off having Star Wars fun. And he said, well, you know, if you're going to be there, you may as well, you may as well file if you want. You may as well, may as well work if you want to make it, make it fun and work. And uh, I was like, yeah, let's do that. So we jumped into it and did uh, a bunch of pieces from there for World News Tonight and Nightline and a bunch of pieces for the web. And it was just so awesome to jump into that. It was in Anaheim in 2015. And, um, you know, just just be immersed in the physical representation of the fandom all around you and had a blast. And so it was after that, doing several pieces um, from there that I thought, well, this this could be this could be a thing that I could do every once in a while because I was at ABC a news correspondent that went and covered death and destruction and real life disasters right. and all sorts of bad things happening to people and to kind of come away from that once or twice a year to do a fun Star Wars story was like kind of a mental health reset in a yeah. lot of ways and so one of the first stories I pitched after celebration is we did a, a big piece on a group of uh, group of friends that put together a, a fan film and ended up winning going all the way to london to celebration to win a fan film award so it was it was just neat to kind of dip into oh, nice. explore the fandom a little bit and um and some of the behind the scenes aspects i was always a huge fan of uh of the visual effects and and the work that ilm had done and the history mm -hmm. of ilm and all of that and so uh trying to trying to kind of come at it from from those angles uh, was always was always super fun and and ended up being you know like I, I called it my side hustle <laughs> at ABC and so then when I came to Newsy one of the one of the um, uh, one of the requirements of coming to Newsy they knew that I had to be the Star Wars guy when Star Wars stuff comes up so uh, so I just started here a few weeks ago and uh, we're just just kind of ramping up but uh, when there is Star Wars stuff to be talked about uh, hopefully I will be there. Awesome. Nice, the guy. I and love there it. is going to be Star Wars stuff to talk about because the Obi Wan series. Is oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, I was talking to somebody at Lucasfilm the other day who had uh, just been down to the Obi Wan set, and uh, that is very exciting. There's like Rogue Squadron. We've got Boba mm -hmm. Fett. We've got more uh, more Mandalorian. Can I just take a second at how calm you just said you talked to somebody at Lucasfilm? Like. Oh. You just you just said it like it's just normal. It's like wait, what? They, the they don't tell me anything. They don't tell me anything. <laughs> to be clear, I have no secrets. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's well underway. Things things seem to be going well, and, uh, and and I'm super excited, like everybody else, to see uh, to see what they come up with there. Oh yeah, I can't I'm just wait. So excited for Hayden Christensen to come back. Oh my gosh! Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I want him to have so, his reclamation. I know. I yeah. swear, if there's lines in Obi Wan about sand, I'm gonna cry. I, I'll laugh actually because <laughs> there needs to be at least one joke. It's that's become an, uh, an internet meme that needs to stick around a little while. It does, but also really, yeah, he deserves better. So speaking of your of your news work, Clayton, uh, you were part of a group that brought an amazing documentary 
uh, to life around the time of the release of the movie The Last Jedi, Star Wars Episode Eight. Uh, the documentary is called The Force of Sound. Now, for those of you who are watching this who haven't watched that, uh, when you're done with this interview today, please go look that up. It's it's only about a half hour long. It's an amazing documentary about how you get to see how these different sounds were made, how they were gathered or created, uh, especially for the movie. And how you, know, you want to know how BB-8 sound of his rolling is made? Oh, They'll so show cool. you in in the you the know sound how of the cords. yeah the the sound of how they you know the coins being collected into BB-8, how they shot them out. All that's it's so very cool, so very detailed. But as I was watching this documentary. Uh, at least the first time I watched it, because I've watched it about three times uh, since then. I do really think it's that well made, by the way. I'm not just oh, saying that. You. Thank you. Um, a lot if, of credit to my my co producer uh, Ronnie Polidoro, who uh, who actually did the the editing on that. He's he's a genius. Okay, because honestly, if I thought it sucked, I'd tell you. Um, <laughs> but uh, the thing I loved about that now. A lot of the filming uh, was done on Star Wars Holy Land at Lucas Ranch. And uh, that's like the mecca of all Star Wars fandom. So what was your experience like being at Lucas Ranch and how did this project come about? It's uh, it's an incredible place, you know, because the, I, I have books on the shelf back here that show photographs of of the entire Skywalker Ranch property as they were building it. And you can see like where the foundations were going in, you know, there's no trees, the roads are still dirt, all of that. And this was, you know, early eighties and to go there today and see it uh, matured, you know, the trees have grown in, everything's kind of filled in. Uh, uh, there's, there's, it, it's just, it's just, an amazingly magical place that is created for filmmakers to have this place where they can go and be inspired. And it's hard, it's hard not to be because, you know, everywhere you turn, it's just some, some beautiful Vista. There's, there's, you know, uh, vineyards all over, all over the hillsides. There's, there's wildlife, there's, uh, the, the goats, the farm animals walking around, you know, the, the Skywalker Ranch chickens became the genesis for the pork sound, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. Um, and it's just, uh, you know, it was, it was, George had a story for every building that he designed. He describes himself as a, as a frustrated architect who happens to be a storyteller. And so the production building where Skywalker Sound is, is based looks like a hundred year old winery uh, from the outside. You know, it looks like it's been there forever. Uh, and inside, it's one of the most technically advanced uh, buildings that you'll ever step foot inside. And so, uh, but it's got a, it's got an entire backstory. And so as does the main house and as does the, the other places. So uh, it, it is this uh, really incredible place where where people come and and ultimately, hopefully are, are inspired to do their to do their best creative work. We already talked about the fact that you were introduced to Star Wars when it first came out in 1977. And there's a pretty big gap between Return of the Jedi and The Phantom Menace, which is sometimes referred to as the dark times. Because um, <laughs> life without Star Wars is just sad. So did you, how did you, what did you do to keep your Star Wars fandom alive during those long, long years? <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, I, I jumped into less of the, like, EU, you know, I, I was never really into the, to the books or, or comics, the, the storytelling part of Star Wars, the mm -hmm. Star Wars stories, I was much more into, and I'm not sure exactly why I gravitated towards this, but I was much more into the special effects. How did they, how did they do all this stuff? And so... I jumped into the, the books that they wrote about ILM, which, uh, you know, in the early days covered not only Star Wars, but talked about everything that they worked mm -hmm. on from E.T. to Poltergeist to, you know, uh, young Sherlock Holmes and Jurassic Park and all these all these other things. And so uh, I, I wanted to learn. I was just fascinated by the early history of ILM and these guys, these men and women in this industrial, you know, park in, in Van Nuys and how it evolved from there and moved north and uh and so i i wanted to learn all about how they how they did this stuff in the in the pre-digital 
age. And so that's really what I collected. I think over here on the shelf, I've got pretty much every ILM uh, book and behind the scenes book that's, that's ever been written. Um, and then uh, I know they, they came much later, but uh, uh, the, the behind the scenes books by J.W. Rinsler, uh, who sadly passed away last week, uh, were just mm -hmm. exquisite tomes of, of very detailed research and uh, yeah, actually, he had access to the archives and access to interviews and interviewed new people. And so, so that's what I really uh, ended up gravitating towards is, is the process of, of how these movies were made, where they were made, the locations, uh, you know, the crew members and, and things like that. So that's kind of what kept it alive for me. L less so, I know a lot of people got into the, to the EU stuff. Um, but uh, for me, it was it was it was behind the scenes that was really fascinating and always has been. Yeah, I can see that because I never as as much as I have loved Star Wars over the years, I've never done the deep uh, canon dives, uh, you know, or the, yeah. the the legends dives, or, or right. yeah. you know, and didn't get into the comic books. I played a few of the video games and, and things along those lines, but I really enjoyed the how from the you know I didn't get into the special effects side, but I liked the how George formulated the movies side of things so when the the revisions of the movies came out and they had the additional dvds with with the behind the scenes you know how the, the movie yeah. was made type of stuff and uh these these different uh special events that talked about how the you know uh, you get to see how the speeder actually floated you know as yeah. it was being as it was being driven and all these different things to me that was really cool uh because i wanted to see how my favorite universe came to be and how george got this thing that was in his head, you know, out into the screen in, in, in front of him and, you know, how people helped him make that, that vision a reality. And so to me, that was always kind of the cool thing. I didn't necessarily care whether it was special effects or not, but I just want to, I love that behind the scenes stuff as well, just from a different angle. Yeah. It was, it was just so cool to see uh, like, like how uh, people like Ralph McQuarrie had probably the biggest influence on the look of that, uh, entire galaxy, which an influence which continues today, uh, you know that he, he's probably I, I would say he's almost equally as important as as George in terms of uh, uh, how that how that entire Star Wars universe came about and and what yeah. it looks. Uh, you know, people like Doug Chang who who uh, is you know is still still designing concept art for for some of these productions and places like galaxy's edge you know they they still go back to the ralph Macquarie guidebook so to speak sure absolutely so another thought here uh i want to talk a little bit more about what you've done as far as your your news related experiences because I'm, I'm just kind of not gonna lie a little, a little stuck on that a little jealous of some of this um but so this is cool um but being the resident star wars guy has has clearly had a little bit of perks for you uh, along the way you've got to go to lucas ranch you've you got to preview galaxy's edge that was pretty awesome um you've been uh be able to go on all these different talk shows and talk about other and with other people about your your love of star wars and share that with other people and and all those things and th that's to me that's all very cool and clearly, being here today is a culmination of all those years of fandom. We understand that. We're thrilled it's to have you, peak. too. It really but is the peak. I, I admit, it's, yeah. It's, it's the top tier. We get that. Um, <laughs> but other than today, what's the best moment for you so far as being a Star Wars fan? Oh, wow. That's... Uh... That That's is... a loaded question for a Star oh, Wars fan. Yeah. I mean, there's been so many good ones. I, you know, I think... Um... I, I will say, and I and I, I I have told the story before, but I will say because it, it still stands out to me as um, something that uh, I still can't believe happened. But I finally finally caught up with Harrison Ford and got to chat with Harrison Ford briefly one once, and uh, my wife was with me, and you know I had over the years chatted and I had interviewed and and done some stuff with Mark Hamill a few times, and. Uh, you know, got, jealous. Got, got jealous to interview the cast of Rogue One, and that, that was all great. Anytime you know you get to talk to to the people who are actually appearing on screen is always always a huge one. But from a very young age, I you know even not only Han Solo but Indiana Jones. I was Indiana Jones for Halloween like three years in a row. I had this thing about wanting to desperately meet Harrison Ford, and I had all of these. I even had like mutual 
pilot friends who fly with him occasionally that uh, that knew him. And uh, my my aunt who lived in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, would s- literally see him at the Jackson Hole hardware store from time to time. And I'm like, <laughs> you got to be kidding me, right? So he was like, I called him like my white whale. And uh, so finally, at the premiere of The Rise of Skywalker, he was there and uh, standing by himself, actually at a table. And my wife and I walked over and started talking to him. And uh, it was... It was great. He was he was as gracious and as kind as you would imagine Harrison Ford to be. But I was so incredibly nervous talking to him. <laughs> the course of about a two minute conversation, I ended up introducing him to my wife, and then halfway through the conversation, introduced him to my wife again, and uh, then the two of them proceeded to make fun of me for doing that. Twice. Oh, oh well, yeah, course. yeah. It was, it was awesome. It was awesome. But I, I would say that that is sort of peak. Peak, uh, you know, Clayton's childhood had just exploded. <laughs> yeah, I, I can appreciate that. My, I can see the uh, jealousy uh, just I, oozing yeah. out of Tim. <laughs> it was, it was, it was pretty, pretty amazing, and I, I, I still can't believe that it happened. I, I make no secret of the fact that Harrison Ford is my all-time favorite actor. Um, yeah, he, my, my son's middle name is Harrison. I, oh, wow, okay. Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't want to say that I have a man crush on him because that's just going to scare him away. But, sure. uh, but you know, we're we're close. But uh, yeah, no, I, but I it's can. Harrison Ford. So and, how can you well, not? Or as your mom likes to call him, hot, Harrison Hottie Pants. Exactly. Um. So, but you know, I, in all honesty, I, I can understand you're saying. You know, I introduced my wife, and then a minute and a half later, I introduced her again because that would be me. <laughs> I, I'd be like ten second Tom from, uh, you know, Fifty First Dates. Hi, have you met Tom? You know. I just, I'd be through the whole time. I'd just be a mess. So, <laughs> that's yeah. if you could remember your name at all. I mean, I'd be very excited to to meet Mark Hamill. Don't get me wrong. I would, I would fanboy. I would giggle. I think if I met Harrison Ford because of him being, he's Deckard. He's, he's oh, Harrison yeah. Ford. Uh, he's he's yeah. Harrison Ford. See, I can't, even, I can't even get the sentence out. He's I Indiana know. Jones. Think about him. You know, now, he's, he's, now you know how I felt. Yeah, exactly. He's Han Solo. He's all these things. He's Indiana Jones. Yeah, i I'd, I'd be a I'd be a puddle on the floor. So good for yeah. you for being able to get two complete senses out. Hi, I'm Clayton. This is my wife. Congratulations to you, sir. Yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 crazy. And uh, you know, he's he's the closest thing I think we have to like the what I imagine to be you know like like the Humphrey Bogarts of the past. You know, the really super, oh yeah, you know, movie Easy. star type. So agreed. Anyhow, yeah, that's that was a big one for sure. So talking about Harrison Ford and the amazing role that is Han Solo, the Solo movie, a lot yep. of people didn't like it, which is sad. But the timing of that movie was rough. The timing of the release was hard yeah. because it was in the wake of Infinity Two or Infinity War and Deadpool Two. Wow, yeah, very right, difficult. Right, yeah. It did, yeah. But if you could make Solo 2 happen, what would be your story pitch? Ooh. Oh, well, that's a good one. I, uh, that's a great one. You know, I, I would love to see, as much as I loved, uh, as much as I, everybody loves the interaction between uh, Han and Leia, I, I would love to see more, more Kira. So a story centered on the two of them. Uh and, and it, taking on taking on Maul, I think in some some fashion, I thought that was a great great way to end that film. And I thought it it <laughs> there was no way they couldn't make a solo two after after doing that, mm-hmm. right? Uh, but here we are. Uh, so yeah, I just I, I think it would have to be something that really because uh, we didn't get much of of uh, the two of them together as much as I would have liked to have seen. And that was always my complaint about the pre the sequel trilogy is that we never got to see Han, Luke, and Leia again together uh, in that in that sequel trilogy. And I just because those are the relationships uh, and the you know they, they're they're cast that way because there's a chemistry there and you want to see that chemistry play mm-hmm. out a little bit. And um, and it left me you know solo left me wanting to see more of that. So I'm I'm hoping that that would sort of be the the center of it. But gosh, plot wise, I don't know. There would have to be some other some other thing. We got the big one. We got the Kessel Run. So, right. Sure. I would love to see 
somehow Han go after Kira, meet up with her, and the two of them and convince her to to leave the crime syndicate and fight against Maul to get to that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the inclusion of Maul would be just amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, Absolutely. So, all right. Well, cool. Well, I feel Clayton, like at some point though, they need to bring B. Arthur's musical number back. Oh, <laughs> we're gonna have to remove her from the feed <laughs> here. <laughs> I, I rewatched that thing uh, in in preparation for interviewing Anthony Daniels last summer about the uh, the, the the new Lego version. Mm-hmm. It is, it's hard to watch. It is hard to watch. <laughs> I tried. I really did. I was going to tell you to blink twice if somebody made you watch it. If, <laughs> if you were, are you safe? Are you the blaster just off camera here? <laughs> <laughs> the Lego one was fun though. Yeah, but- fun is one word for it. Yeah. There, well, not everything Lego is good. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. So, all right. So, Clayton, we've gotten to a point in the show where we like to do a little quiz with our guests. Oh, okay. I didn't study. Uh, but well, no. Oh, no. no. You have had you You've have had, had years to study. Forty plus right. years to study this. You're okay. Right. So, this is a quiz about your Star Wars fandom. Okay. All right. So you got five questions. All questions are multiple choice. If you get three of the questions correct, we'd like to send you one of these I gave to the Red Shirt Widows and Orphans Fund coffee mugs. Lovely. Okay? All right, good. Very good. If you get four questions correct, we're going to send you the the coffee mug and this book. If I turn it correctly, I might be able to read it. There we go. Yeah. Uh, it's it's called Cust- I know. It's called <laughs> Custodians of the Cosmos. Uh, it's written by our group founder, Drayton Allen. Okay. And uh, it's all written about a, a young man who wanted to join Starfleet. But he couldn't hack it, so he washed out and rejoins as a custodian to boldly clean up after those who boldly just went. So, <laughs> so, and we'll make sure that Drayton signs that for you. So, if you get three correct, you wow. get just the mug. You get four correct, you get the mug and the book. Okay, that's some pressure. All right. I, yeah. I, I, it, let's, let's well, here's it. the real it gets pressure. Worse. <laughs> we like to call it a fun sequence. If you if you get less than three, so one or either one or two correct, we take a picture. Of you, we make a meme out of you, and we submit it to our group for approval. Okay, and they, they are meme <laughs> fanatics. Uh, so I've heard, yeah. So I've seen. So I'm joining the group. Yes. All right. So do you do you agree to these terms, sir? I'm in. All right, Kathleen, take us out. All right. Question number one: What is the name of Yoda's home planet? A. Dagoba. B. Bagelba or C Moss Eisley. Bagelba is really fun to say. Bagelba with a D like dog. Yes. There you go. Bagelba. Right. I'm I, just gonna have fun saying Bagelba now. I may have giggled as I wrote Bagelba, but <laughs> all right. Who is Chancellor Palpatine's Sith alter ego? Is it Darth Plagueis, Darth Sidious, or Darth Tyrannus? Darth Sidious. Very good. Two for two, sir. All right. Question number three. I'm out of Who? the mean zone, right? Almost. Not yet. You Almost. Gotta, you got you to gotta get the third one correct. Okay, then you're out it. of meme land. Got All it. right. Who was Count Dooku's Padawan before he left the Jedi? A, Mace Windu. B, Qui-Gon Jinn. Or C, Plow Koon. Why do you do this to me, too? Plow Koon. Lord. That one, I don't know. I'm going to say uh, Mace. You are incorrect. It is Qui-Gon Jinn. Oh, Qui-Gon. He would have been my it second Okay, It's All fun right. to say Qui-Gon. It is fun to say Qui-Gon. It's a good name. All right. It's a good so, name. Good Star Wars name. So so two good ones, one negatory one. All right. So question number four. I could never be on that schmodown thing. I would. <laughs> <laughs> right? All right. So question four. What alien race does Admiral Akbar belong to? Is he a fishadarian, a toydarian, or a mon calamari? A mon calamari. Very good. And you, sir, have earned yourself a coffee mug. Oh, fantastic. Very good. All kind. right. Three prizes. That's awesome. And question number five. What is the name of the person running the cloud city of Bespin? A, Hal Jordan. B, Kit Fisto. Why do you do these to me, Tim? Or C, Lando Clarissian. Lando. That there is you go. correct. 
So four hour. out of five, you get yourself a book and a coffee mug. Well, and Kevin uh, gets to butcher more names. <laughs> although I, I, I have, I have a feeling that Lobot was actually doing most of the work, but that's just me. You're probably not wrong. Who knows? Yeah, hey, you know, Lando was good at taking credit for a lot of things. That's kind of what he did. He did. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not faulting the man. You know, you set it up right. That's the way it's yeah. supposed to work. Yep. So. <laughs> All right, Clayton. Thank you so much for being on our show with us today. Four Where out of five, right? you did four out of five. Where do five. people go to find more about you, your work, and your fandom? I would say the best part would be place would be uh, Twitter uh, at Clayton underscore Sandell, C L A Y T O N underscore S A N D E L L. I'll see you there. There you go. He's fun to follow, kids. He's he puts out some cool stuff. Well, thank you. Uh, you we know. will make sure that we get that in the description so that all of our beautiful listeners, followers, all of those people can cyberstalk you like Tim does. Perfect. <laughs> cyberstalk sounds rough. Honor. I'm sorry. I'll, so that they can research about follow. you like Tim does. Follow. <laughs> it's what Twitter calls it. That's what I'm going to call it. Thank All right. You. Now, and as always, we want to remind you that subscribing is the single most important thing that you can do to ensure that we get more amazing guests like Mr. Sandell here and funny moments for you guys to listen to. So please subscribe. It's going to do far more to help us than you can ever really know. And be sure to check out Clayton's documentary, The Force of Sound. You can find that on YouTube and go, of course, check him out on uh, Twitter as well. Now, if you're not happy with the content of today's video, all you have to do is submit in duplicate, of course, to Jabba the Hutt, the head of our complaint department. Jabba needs two copies. Why, you ask? Well, one for himself and one he can forge it to hide this true work from the Empire if needed. But rest assured, the offending parties aren't going to be fed just to the Rancor for entertainment. Oftentimes, they're taken out to the Dune Sea for a meet and greet with the Sarlacc Pit, where they can discuss their podcasting sins over the next millennium while being slowly digested. Please don't report me to Chaba. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just thinking about it. And I'm like, no, don't do it. Anyway, you know, thanks again, Clayton. This has been a lot of fun. Well, thank you guys for having me. I had a lot of fun, and uh, let's do it again sometime. Absolutely. I'd love to. All right. Goodbye, everyone, and thanks for watching. Goodbye, Bye, guys. Yeah. Our show is brought to you by our charity sponsor, the Red Shirt Widows and Orphans Fund, which supports the Wish Upon a Teen Foundation that helps out sick kids when they need it most. And just imagine the comfort you'll give Red Shirt Crewman number 11. He'll know that when he puts on the red shirt, only, be only to be tossed into a Sarlacc pit 22 minutes into an eventual Star Wars crossover event that really never should have happened that he didn't leave his family destitute or without hope because the Red Shirt Widows and Orphans Fund has his back and what's left of his phaser. And speaking of sponsors and show partners, check out this short video from our good friends over at Level Up Lightsabers. Information about Level Up Lightsabers and their online training sessions can be found in the episode description below. On behalf of the rest of the hosts of Funny Science Fiction, we'd like to thank you for listening to this episode. If you'd like to be a guest on one of our future episodes, please contact us by means of our Facebook group, Funny Science Fiction. You can find us on Twitter or Instagram using the handle at Funny Sci-Fi, or you can go to DraytonAllen.com and click the Contact Me link at the bottom of the page. Thanks again. Hope you enjoyed the episode. 